Hi everybody, my name is Marcel and I'm a Cloud Solutions and DevOps Architect. A few weeks ago I created a blog post to show how you can create a GitHub self-hosted runner, Actions Runner, within a code space. Um, since that time I've decided to basically create a uh, publicly available code space with this functionality built in. And I decided today to just create a quick tutorial video to show you how you can get started with this. So just to recap on the blog post that I created is and what we're going to do here today. For you who use code spaces, um, what we're basically going to do is we're going to create a code space but from a publicly available code space image that has got a self-hosted actions runner embedded within the code space container. So the benefits of this is basically having a self-hosted actions runner running alongside your code space that you can then utilize in your, uh, you know, to run your, your actions as almost like a self-hosted runner. And what is nice about this is you're utilizing the compute power of your code space a little bit better by running the, the, the runner, by running the actions runner inside of the code space. What this also helps with is that you can um, have the life cycle of the runner alongside of the code space. So basically what that means is when you delete the code space, you will also remove the runner associated with it. So just to jump into that, um, here is the repo where, where you can find more information about the you know the the github actions runner dev container but let's let's basically let's build this and see uh what we need to do because there's a few extra steps that you need to do when, before you run this this um container so basically what we'll do is i'm going to just create a uh, new repository and i'm just going to call this um let's say my super cool code and uh, just going to be a demo repo uh, going to make that a public repo uh, we can initiate it with a readme file don't need a git ignore file put a license in let's use the mit so let's just create this repository it takes a few few minutes to create or a few seconds as you can see here so what we will do first is we're going to go to the code button here and then we're just going to create the code space on master so we're just going to create a, a plain code space just to get started so what this does is it actually creates a, um, a container that opens basically visual studio code and what it's going to do is it's actually going to clone my repository into this container and I can then start coding straight away inside of my web browser. And you can see here as well that my, you know, my code space is, is cloned. Um, but I don't have any extensions or tools or um, anything. You know, if I go back to this, this repo here, uh, we take a quick look at the settings, you'll, you'll notice that we don't have any runners or anything configured or, or anything, pretty much. So what we're going to do next is I'm just going to click on here the code spaces button on the bottom left hand corner and I am going to configure a dev container. I'm going to select this option here. What this is going to do is it's going to ask me do I want to modify my active configuration or start from scratch. I'm just going to start from scratch and here is where you can find my public dev container with the GitHub Actions Runner built in. If you scroll down, you will see this one here, which is called GitHub Actions Runner. We're going to select that. Um, the default image that we're going to use, it's a, it's a, a, a Unix image or a, um, what's called Bullseye, so we'll, we'll pick that. Next, we're going to pick uh, the version of the self-hosted runner that we want to install. By default, it's going to just use the latest one. Now, now we can select what extra tools do we want within this code space. Well, I like Terraform, so I'm going to um, 
take Terraform, TF Lent and TF Grunt. Um, we'll take that one. And maybe something like Azure CLI uh, is also quite handy to have. So I'm going to select these two extra tools to be uh, initiated with my container. So when I press OK on that, what you'll notice is it's created a special folder in my repo called .devcontainer. And it's actually used the template that is going to build um, the this Docker image, um, which is got the self-hosted runner built into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this and commit this, uh, create a code space and with a runner. I'm just going to commit that and sync that back up. Um, I can come out of this code space now, so I'll just do that. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to delete that old code space there. Now, now you, you'll you notice here the dev container folder uh, that, that we will basically use to spin up the code space. But before we can do that, there is a few things that we need to do to this repository for that runner to basically initiate itself against this project. So you'll see here my, my repo is called my super cool code. So what I'm going to do first is we'll need to create a few things. We're going to have to create three secrets. Now the first secret is going to be the owner or org. Uh, the second thing is going to be the repo name. And then the third thing is that we're going to need is going to be a PAT token or a GitHub token. So we'll generate that GitHub token first. So I'm going to go to my GitHub organization here and just go to settings. Under settings, right at the bottom, there is a, a setting called developer settings. I'm going to click on that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a personal access token using the classic tokens. And I'm going to generate a new token. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this code space runner. And I'm going to set this expiry to, I can have it custom or no expiry. Uh, expiry. I, I recommend, you know, seven days would be fine. So the permissions that we need is going to be all of the repo and then also the org, um, but only the read permission of the org. So when, when, this, when we generate this token, uh, oops, let me do, do that. And let's generate this token. Now I'm going to copy this token here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and navigate back to my uh, repository, which is called my super cool code. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to create some secrets. But the secrets I'm going to create, I want to be uh, kind of initiated within code spaces. So under code space secrets, I'm going to create a new secret called GitHub or GH underscore token. And I'm just going to paste that token in there and add that secret. I'm going to also just grab my org name here. And then I'm going to do GH underscore owner. And I'm going to just paste that in there. And then I'm going to select this repository because I want my actions runner to register itself against this repository. So that is gh underscore repository. I'm just going to paste that in there. Now, this is all we need on our code space secrets. Just that token, the owner, and the repository. We already have our dev container here. Now what we will do next is we're going to basically spin up our code space and it's going to attach a self-hosted runner onto this um, uh, repository using the compute power of the code space uh, that we can use. And um, yeah, and the life cycle will basically be uh, combined with the code space. So let's Let's have a look at that. So what we'll do next is we're going to 
create a code space here. So code space repository configuration. So what we will do is we'll create a new code space with options. And then we can select basically what branch we want to create, the, you know, which branch wants to be, needs to be cloned to the code space. We're just going to use the master branch in this case. The configuration, well, we only have that one configuration. The region, we'll pick our closest region, which is Europe West. Now, because this is going to be an actions runner as well, I'm going to beef this up a little bit. I'm going to make this an 8 core uh, uh, with um, uh, 16 gig RAM and a 64 gig uh, drive. So I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to just go create code space. What is going to happen now is my code space is going to build based on that public image with the self hosted runner built into it. Now this process can take a little bit of time. It can take maybe, depending on how much tools you install. Remember, I install extra uh, Terraform and Azure CLI and, and all of that. So, But what you can basically do is you can have a look at the logs. And this will show you step by step at, like exactly how this container is going to be built, um, when it's going to install and register the runner. Uh, it will install all your tooling and everything, and then it will eventually launch. So I'm just going to uh, stop the video here and fast forward it a little bit to when this is uh, finished. And as you can see, the, um, the container is now finished building. And We'll just give that a moment to start up. And you can see here is my repo again. Super cool code, just like before. But what is different to this container now is if I open a, uh, a shell, I can actually go and look. Um, uh, remember, what, what did I install here? I, I, um, I installed Terraform Extra. So let's have a look. Let's just type Terraform. Um, version. Let's see what version. Okay, so we can see that Terraform, the latest version, is on here. And let's have a look. So AZ version as well. Just check if the CLI is in here. Yep, CLI is in here. But what's really cool now about this code space is if I just jump back to my repository, if I go back to settings and have a look at my actions runners, you will now see that I have a code space runner, a code spaces runner uh, that is idle and ready for taking any work. You'll also notice that this runner is actually tagged with the user name uh, that created the, the code space as well as the re repository name. So whenever a uh, uh, a self-hosted runner is kind of attached to the code space, it will also tag uh, the, the runner with the um, username. So we can have a look here and see, you know, that we've got now uh, our runner, basically, that we can use inside of our code space. And this runner is running, obviously, inside of the code space. So it's, you know, that eight core, um, 16 gig RAM code space that we have, this runner will be using that compute when, whenever we call uh, you know, our action workflows. Um, and that's about it, really. So what we can do now as well as we can come out of this code space. Um, and what is really nice about this is, it, say for example, we stop our code space. And you can see here that the, the code space is now um, sorry, the actions runner is now also offline. We can obviously rename this code space to say, um, you know, this is a code space plus runner on master, I guess. Let's uh, save it to that. And so now every time we want to um, uh, start our code space, we can just click this and, and start it back up. So we can do that. Let's uh, let's start that this one back up, and you'll see it starts up pretty quickly because the image is built already. So we'll just give that a moment. Okay, that's come up, 
And if we now go back to our under runners, you'll see that our runner is back on idle. Okay, so to do a cleanup, what we'll do is um, just going to close this code space. What I'll do is I'll just remove this runner and under my code, I can just go and delete this code space. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this quick demo tutorial and I hope you'll have lots of fun with your code spaces. Thank you very much.